Havana was for that kind of tourist that they were to Cuba and they spent dollars and they got the bottles because mm. my family never could get one bottle of Havana because it was quite expensive, no? Oh, sure. However, uh, Legendario was able for everyone. You yeah. could buy Legendario everywhere. Elixir, I think, was something innovative. So it was like a sign of the God, no? The, of the, of, yeah. They, they said, hey, do something different. But for me, the best mojito I have drunk in, in Praga. In Praga. Uh, what were the like strategies you, you used to get to know uh, new people and to open new markets? First. Pozdrav svima i dobrodošli u još jednu epizodu Tipsi podcasta. Danas imam posebnu čast ugostiti mog prijatelja sa Kube, koji je glavni čovjek koji stoji iza ovog predivnog legendario ruma. Danas je sa nama Jesus Lester Pomo Gonzalez. Jesus, welcome to Tipsi podcast. Hvala. Hvala. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you for do, you like, do you like uh, Zagreb, Croatia? It's my first time here and so I like it so much. Yes, yeah. because I saw one nice uh, city, uh, clean and yeah. with many friendly people. Yes, yeah. it's nice. It's really Thank you for inviting me to come. Yes. Yeah, it's hot here, but... Yes, yes, it's gonna... similar like in, yeah. <laughs> in, in Valencia <laughs> and also in, in Cuba, yes. Yeah. Especially in Cuba. What are the Especially like, in Cuba like... will be more or less no. Uh, Cuba always we have around 37 degree, 33, 37 at night maybe 23, but it's hot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Our winter there is uh, 21, 22. That's yes, the, more or less. the most beautiful. <laughs> huh? Yeah. So uh, for the beginning, uh, can we get something for drink? Then we're gonna go gonna go for the questions. Yes. So, yeah. Do you like to drink something now? Yeah. You to start now? So I recommend you to start with Añejo Blanco. Yeah. Um just before starting, we would like to make something that all the Cuban will do. Maybe mm-hmm. you don't know it or not. Uh, usually before <clears throat> uh shooting with the rum or any liquor, but especially with rum, yeah. We I'm sorry, but maybe I have to put a little bit on the on the ground. It's possible. Yeah, it's possible. And you know why we do that? Why? Depending on the religion, it doesn't matter. But uh, it's just to give thanks to the to the earth, to give thanks to the ah. saints, to give thanks to the to God. Yes, it's the way to, to start the drinking. Then I was drinking. <laughs> Beautiful. So that's the tradition. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Every Cuban, we we do the same. Yes. Beautiful. Okay. So, uh, for the people who doesn't know you and uh, would like to learn more about Thank you, you. Uh, can you give us your, you know, a little bit of a background and how did you actually started to work for yes. Legendario? Okay, I'm, I'm Cuban. I'm living in Spain around 26 years. And at the beginning, I was working in another uh, companies in ceramic tiles, mm-hmm. car wash. Mm-hmm. And one of these company I hear about Legendario uh, because uh, okay, Legendario is a Cuban rum, and I'm, I'm Cuban, so not not everything was perfect. And I said okay, so I I know them. Uh, I send them my curricula, and mm-hmm. they call me, and I like them, and so they it decided start, to yeah. start. Uh, yeah. It was in 2007. They didn't have any international market. I I had a lot of experience in the international market in, in other companies, and so I decided to. I said, okay, I come in here to start opening the Legendario everywhere mm-hmm. abroad. And for me, it was a pressure because it was my, my drink, no, it was yeah. my, my, my product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, I decided uh, I start opening markets. So finally, we did uh, today 21 markets around the world. 21 markets. Yes, and that's the reason I'm like the responsible for international markets. Yeah, of course. So uh, when you, when you uh, started, to, to work for Legendario. Yeah, they were only like represented in Spain, if we are talking about uh, Europe. Yes, only Spain. Yeah, just was only in Spain. Yeah. In Europe, we had a, a small private customer. One, they were Cuban. Uh, one guy was in, in Germany. 
and another another person, another distributor was in Italy. So they they made the, the Italian guy. He make a good job, yes. But once I started in Legendario, so we start uh, ser- researching the market and yeah. looking for other alternative, and yeah. we start uh, promoting more, no, doing more uh, breaking to the different markets. Sure, yeah. Uh, I noticed when uh, I met you in Berlin about the, that bottle is kind of different than the other products of uh, of the spirits. What was what, the catch with the, no, with the I, bottle? I think, I think that the bottle is, because if you see the bottle of Havana, or more or less, maybe because of the producer, it's the same, I don't know, I'm not sure, but uh, they look, all of them are the same style, no? Yeah. But we want to... to uh, be sure uh, to make to gather all information about Cuba in one bottle, in one product, not only in the liquid, but in the bottle also. Sure. So the bottle, if you see, uh, okay, the Cuban flag, but the bottle it has like the the shape of the Palma Real. The Palma Real is the national tree in Cuba. Ah. Yes. Uh, do you know where the Palma? Yes. I, I'm just gonna. Like maybe you can Google it. Palma, Palma Real. Real in Cuba. Yes. Palma Real. Yes. Okay. Uh, was the also is the silhouette of the the shape of the the ring oh, of the Cuba? Oh yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. You see? No shit, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. this is our national tree. Okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. So that's the bottle is shape of Palma Real. It's pa- many other things. Palma Real. The I don't know how to spell that now in in Spanish. Even in English, I forgot. Um, the ring of the of the Cuba, um, Vitola. Mm-hmm. La vitola, the you know that every 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 cigar they have like a ring, yeah, and it looks like this. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. And also the Cuban female silhouette, the Cuban female Simo- shape, yeah, yeah, yes, the criollita, la cubana criolla. Oh my God! Yeah. Uh, yes, something to gather in one product. The, did the the bottles had a flag from the beginning of producing? No, 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 because in Cuba the flag is only allowed to put with uh, art uh, in doc- medicine and sport, but not in this kind of uh, sure. yes. And so in Cuba they don't place the the, the flag. Uh-huh. Okay. So uh, our product is bottle, is produced and bottle in Cuba one hundred percent. They come to Spain. Mm, perhaps maybe I'm going after your question. Your uh, maybe ninety-eight percent of the production comes to Spain mm-hmm. uh, by ships, sometimes by plane, yeah. but normally by by vessels. And here we open the the box in Spain again, and we clean clean the bottles and put the flag, the oh, Cuban flag. That's a lot of Be- work. Yes. Yeah. Even, for example, in Cuba, the, the the situation with the carton with the glass is quite complicated. So here. We prepare the cartons, all the separators of the boxes, yeah. the labels. We send it to Cuba, and in Cuba they put everything and they bring it back. This is a yes, a lot of work to do. A lot of work, yes. But you are respecting your roots. Yes, sure. where, where did it came from, and uh, you are delivering it to us in Europe to get a taste of the Cuba, and like yes, in that way. This is one of our main um, strengths, I think that the, the same product you drink in Cuba mm-hmm. uh, that you sit there in, at the beach with your friends uh, with a guitar mm-hmm. is the same that you drink here when you are with your friend in one disco or maybe one pub or maybe now one, the way we are together mm-hmm. for me it's a pleasure because I'm talking to you in, in quite a um, simple way yeah. that it looks like I'm in Cuba, no? Yeah. <laughs> However, I'm here in Instagram. Yes. You're like imagining. Yes, yeah. yes. So you see that I'm living this moment. Yeah. Is it? Uh, is that a rum that uh, Cuban people drink? Yes, no, yes. Okay. Uh, I will tell you. Every time the people say that uh, Havana Club is a Cuban rum, the, the Ron de los Cubanos, Havana Club. Yeah. Yes, it's true. Havana Club is a Ron de los Cubanos. Havana Club is a Ron de los Cubanos. Uh, as is uh, legendario, Santiago de Cuba, Ron Baradero, Ron Mulata, all of them are the Cuban Ron. Mm-hmm. But in that time, Havana was for that kind of tourist that they were to Cuba and they spent dollars and they got the bottles because mm-hmm. my family never could get one bottle of Havana because it was quite expensive. No? Oh, sure. However, 
uh, Legendario was able for everyone. You yeah. could buy Legendario everywhere. I remember when I was a child, uh, because my grandfather, he was like a cowboy. Uh, I don't know, farmer, I'm sorry, not farmer, cowboy, yeah. farmer, but he was working with the cows. And he likes, after his work, to, to take his sips of rum. It's normal in Cuba, even in the, in the country uh, side. And I remember the name of Legendario uh, with a bottle, uh, all style bottle with a logo Blanco. This one, this one. Okay, the, the label was different, the bottle was different, but was a Legendario Blanco. Yeah, beautiful. So uh, we, we, we told the name Legendario so many times now, but uh, can we start, let's say, from the beginning to give us some uh, history? of the Legendario Ram, when it was funded, uh, how did everything uh, go? I will tell you a bit more, eh, because yeah. I like it. Yeah, oh, sure. Can I, you can say it here. Then, then, we, then we will move on to the nine-year-old, right? Wow. Sure. Um, see. see, why not? Okay. So when uh, did everything started with Legendario? Uh, let me because it's a long story so i don't want to be quite heavy with these uh, tales sure but uh, in the second half of the 19th century mm -hmm. and the cuba start producing the light rum you know that there are spanish rum, there are three kinds of rum there is a spanish one mm -hmm. that belongs to our rum uh, legendario uh, all the latin american rums mm -hmm. they are british rum Mm -hmm. that are spices yeah, yeah, yeah. and the French the agricole. So the Cuban one, the, the, the Spanish, most of them belongs to the light rum, uh, Rones Ligero. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but between the rum, le, Rones Ligero, light rum, mm -hmm. is Legendario, one of them, Legendario and oh, okay. all the Cuban one. So it was in 1946 when uh, Cuba started producing with the label, with the name Legendario. Yes. 1946. And 1946. And at the beginning, they had one elixir. Uh, but after that, they they moved to the white one because normally the Cuban, they, the, the, the dark one is something that's happening after, no? Mm -hmm. uh, but the Cuban, we like to drink the, the pure one, the, the white. And so that that's, uh, you like to, do, like on Cuba, you like to drink the white ones. Yes. Yes, yeah. even even with you sip directly from the bottle. Yes, if you want to be more fine and more polite and more educated with someone, yes, you you put it here. But yeah. when you are in, with a friend in a beach, for example, you take the bottle and you 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 oh, drink yeah. directly from yeah, the bottle. It's a yes. national drink. Yes, it's yeah. something. Yeah. So after uh, after uh, the legendary was founded, what happened next? Uh, I saw that you had a uh, uh, different shapes of the bottles to the history. How 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 was the Le history going? Yes, to, to Legend today? Legendario was founded, and in 1959 the Cuban Revolution came, mm -hmm. and many of the people of the uh, companies owners company owners that they spent a lot of effort on his, their life in Cuba as mm -hmm. was Bacardi. Mm -hmm. These rich people were living in Cuba, so but uh, the Cuban Revolution make nationalize the the companies. And so they were, they must leave. They didn't have option just to, to leave the company yeah. and to move to, to other because, uh, yes, they, they said, all the work I have done before, now this no, doesn't work well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Cuba, in that moment, just start exporting. This is something that I know not, maybe someone can say, hey, what are you talking about? This is not true, or maybe, but this is the, the Normal history I have here for a long, long time. Of course. And uh, they start producing, they start with uh, Havana mm -hmm. and uh, exporting Havana abroad. Mm -hmm. mm, and Legendario was registered in many countries by Bacardi, like their own brands. Ah. So we couldn't export uh, Legendario as a, as a, as a Legendario, Legendario brand. brand yes. Yeah. And this happens in 2000. When my boss, uh, the Senor Jorge Alonso, he is the president of the company group. The, the group is uh, uh, Grupo Alonso. Because he got some, I, I will not go into details with sure. it because it's something that is not important now. But he got the 
the trademark of Legendario mm -hmm. that was registered here in Spain, uh, was registered in Spain, and uh, he made agreement with Cuba, and so he became like a sole distributor for mm -hmm. worldwide of Legendario brand. So okay. Since that time, Legendario was exporting from Cuba to other countries, to Spain first, to Spain, yes. So uh, at, the, at the beginning, was there any like trouble, troubles, complications about transferring it from Cuba to the Europe? Or it was just, you know? At the beginning, no, but once we, we could, we had, once my, my, my the, the, uh, Mr. Alonso had the license or the, the trademark in order to export, the, to, to import from Cuba, yeah. He didn't face any problem. We were a uh, first country was Spain and they were developing in Spain like and today is the, the maximum, the, the most important major country that they import legendario today, yeah. Spain. Uh, but yes, we had a lot of problem because we had problem with the denomination of the, for example, in that time, uh, legendario elixir. The name was uh, Ron legendario, uh, elixir from the Cuba. And so, because of the alcohol graduation, they said, no, must be a liqueur. But it's not liqueur because liqueur is produced from the fruit. Yeah. And this is come from the sugarcane molasses. So, they, we have to change to look for another name and was given the punch of whom? Punch whom? Punch of whom, yeah, yes. Yeah. And so, that, that's uh, Elixir de Cuba is also uh, uh, like an interesting story uh, to tell because. It's kind of a, 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 a liquid for everybody. Anybody can drink and like it, but it's it's still not a rum because of the thirty-four yes. percent of, of uh, uh, ABV. ABV, yes. But it's made of sugar cane, <laughs> so yes, yes. it's kind of yeah, it's kind of complicated to explain. But the most important thing is that the liquid inside is amazing. And uh, you can drink it whenever you want it, and that's the most important thing. How it's called, it doesn't matter. Yet. Yes, uh, we, we did elixir because, of course, uh, in Cuba there's a lot of nice brands. Not in Cuba, also in Latin America, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, every country that they produce rum in Latin America. Yes, the, the quality is quite good because I like also Matusalén, mm -hmm. uh, Brugal. Yeah, it's a white for me. It's so good, and Elixir, I think, was something innovative. So it was like a sign of the God, no? The, of the, of, yeah. They, they said, hey, do something different in order to break into the kind of segment that they don't drink so much alcohol. That Because we don't want to label. I mean, label, not to put label. We don't want to name the Elixir is for you or for you. No, Elixir is for everybody. Yeah. So we did it uh, thinking all kind of audience, no? of the consumers. Yeah. But it's it's a great name actually. Yes. Elixir means something. Elixir is, it means something that is uh, help you with your health, that cure your your burn. That is yeah. something like like a magic potion, no? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, even there are some <laughs> some story about Elixir Legendario that <laughs> uh, yes, that are quite funny. Uh, in Spanish, I cannot translate it now, so I will not say it because maybe. In English, doesn't sound so good, and the people will be confused. <laughs> yes, but yes, it's, uh, yeah. it's amazing rum. Okay, so uh, you're uh, born Cuban. You saw so many rums over there. You tried so many. Can you, like, in in, in short, can you tell us uh, how does the process of making yes, one yes. rum looks like? You I, can, I, yes, sure. you can tell how does it look like to to make legendaria. Yes. Uh, Okay, the first process is the sugar cane uh, that come in, in Cuba. We are, the, our fields are sure. plenty of sugar cane, yes. You say there are in the, mountains mostly. Yeah. No, it's in the flat region because Cuba, the, in the mountain we have... Uh, let me start for another sorry, thing. Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm sorry, because I wasn't... Mean, yes. There are three, uh, the trilogy that we can name Cuba is the, that make Cuba special is the, the room. Uh, the run that come from the sugar, the sugar cane, of course, the coffee, and and the cigars, the Cuban mm -hmm. cigars. This made a perfect combination uh, mm -hmm. in the historical Cuba, no? Yeah. In Cuba, uh, our our landscape is mostly flat. There are some mountains, of course, but in these mountains, um, 
most of the 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 harvest the harvest no? uh, yeah like herbal. Yeah, yes it's it produced by coffee it's by coffee or other things but the the sugarcane is most on the flat area flat region in the west side of the cuba west side is pinal de rio la habana matanzas also in my province uh, santi espiritus mm -hmm. And on the east side, where before was the big distilleries in sure. Oriente. Yeah. And they, they take the sugar canes uh, with a lot of cherish because we don't. I, we can say that our our rum is organic rum mm -hmm. because we don't use pesticides, insecticides. Everything Nothing. is quite natural. Yes. Well, that's uh, However, we don't that's have, important thing. Yeah. But we don't have any any document that uh, say that it's organic because uh, normally some countries say that. But I need the document. No, we don't have it. Yeah. But we can prove that it's organic. Perfect. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yes. That's a, that's a and important thing. Yeah. So after that, uh, the the um, they get the juice, sugar cane juice in the in the mills, mm -hmm. and it's fermented by some old yeasts. Mm -hmm. Do you mean? The, do you know where it is? It's like a yeah, yeah I know. Is, yeah. is it true that uh, Cuban rums uh, use champagne yeast? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? No, I read that some somewhere. Really? Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe another, but no, I didn't know that. But it's uh, like a uh, old school method to mm -hmm. do. Uh, I mean, it's nothing wrong, wrong with it. It's actually great. I yeah. know that some of these yeasts are for centuries uh, kept in, in Cuba. Eh? They have... Yes, really? Yeah, really. Okay. They have Sorry to interrupt. Yes. Go, on. Go on. And so they, they make it from the sugar cane. They make the molasses when this yeast, uh, when it's fermented, so they start diluting the mm -hmm. rum. Uh, normally in Cuba, there are five uh, columns uh, uh, for uh, cleaning the yeah. impurities. Yeah. But usually for our room, we use only one. Only one or two, uh, except for the vodka that we have. I told you that we have a vodka, new vodka yeah. using Cuba from the Jurkane molasses also. And after that is um, it's a storage in American oak barrels or Canadian oak barrels mm -hmm. that have more than fifteen years work. This is the process for all our rooms, no? Mm -hmm. And when it's a storage there, the distiller master is making from time to time some. Blending is is blending with another age based. Sure. The age base that we have in Cuba are from forty five percent, fifty five percent, and sixty five sixty percent. Mm -hmm. And they take some of this blend in order to uh, get the proper balance. Sure. Yeah. And after that, it um, it's a storage again and and bottle it. Yeah, but this is the, 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 in, in in short, what is the yeah, the and uh, most of the rums are blended rums. Like you yes, can, yes, all of them. Yes. Yeah, you need to. So, for example, in the let's say nine-year-old, a uh, nine-year-old. Mm -hmm. So the number nine, it means that uh, nine-year-old is the oldest rum in this bottle, right? Yes, but according to the law, we cannot say nine years. Okay, we put nine year because most of the because of the marketing and the people they want to hear. Ah, yeah. it's nine year, nine year. The people like uh, all of us. Yeah. We we like, no. But uh, to the Cuban legislation, they say this the minimum drop, the minimum age that has in this uh, blend, no. Yeah. And the blend they take from four, five, six, nine, nine years. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, but according to the uh, distiller master perception, the rum is really nine years. But we cannot write this in any document. We cannot say, no, it's nine years, because gotcha, there is yeah. no proof that it's nine years. But uh, 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 if the law changes, maybe yes, we can say, yes, it's nine years. Yes. Yeah. But the law says that uh, basic, like white rum, it must, for the Cuban rum, yes, for the Cuban. it must be in oak for three years. Yes. Right? Yes, yeah. right. So that's, uh, that's what I communicate all the time. That's the difference between uh, Cuban rum and maybe other rums because cuban rum has a law that says it must be in oak for yes. three years yes if you see uh let's say pure white cuban rum it means that it's filtered back to remove the color yes right uh 
the color that they get, for example, the Añejo Blanco, you see the color, the ember color. The yeah. color is not because it's adding color inside. No, 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 no. no. I, say, uh, I say if if this one, if this is uh, completely white. The, the pure one, yes. Yeah, and yeah. if it's an original Cuban rum, it means that it's filtered back to remove the color. Yes. Yeah, right. Yes. So, but this one, this is an oak color, yeah. No, yeah, no, no yeah, added color. Yes. yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so let's get back to the portfolio. Uh, which of uh, this is not the whole portfolio? There is a uh, much yes, more, but yes. which of them is like uh, the most awarded and uh, the best rum that you can that you can tell us about? Uh, yes, sure. You can, and you you know it is elixir because elixir is the the, the key product. The elixir mm -hmm. is the product that open all the doors because mm -hmm. of the the graduation, the ABP, because of the the taste it's quite different comparing with other brands i mm -hmm. know and you know there's other brands that they have produced another elixir but it's quite different taste maybe they use um how can i say it in english it's liver um Shiva. see it's a plum uh, a plum yes they yeah. use plum and um, and we use uh, raisin dry raisin from argentina because in cuba we don't have raisins mm -hmm. so the raisins come from argentina and I saw the process there, but I cannot say more because there is a part that is forbidden for us to see, no? Because it's, it belongs to the distiller master, the, the secret. Of course, secret. top secret, yeah. Yes, but they take this, they, they squeeze these uh, raisins and they get like a juice, and this juice is a stirring in one barrel mm -hmm. uh, for a long time. It's a stirring slowly and slowly. I don't know the revolution of the, the time that he makes, and after they get this, he filtered it and it's adding to the barrels that is uh, Very, story the rum is already yes, inside. Yeah. Yes. And after that, they settle down for seven months in order to get they get the proportion. I don't know which proportion they of the of side of raising they yeah. put, and they get the elixir. Yeah, but it's beautiful. It's uh, you have a rum, you have a vanilla brown sugar. Yes. Uh, you have uh, caramel taste. Uh, yes, caramel. Maybe some of the to chocolate, tobacco, yes, chocolate, chocolate yeah. and tobacco. Yes. Yeah. All Beautiful. of our rum, they have some different hints. Yeah. Like, uh, for example, the the whites, uh, they they have the citrus hints. Yeah. But also fruity, and some of them vanilla, the, the dark one, the meditation, meditative rums. The, yeah. The dark ones, they have this kind of um, oriental wood, no? Uh, yeah. Smell, yes. So, uh, I'm, uh, uh, let's talk about this baby a little bit. Yes. So, uh, this is a, this is a 15 year old yes. Legendario uh, rum, which yes. uh, was presented to me by Jesus at the Berlin fair in Germany. And I was, uh, quite impressed. So I got the email that, uh, couple thousand bottles are available now so i needed to order and uh this is gonna be the first time that i'm gonna try it after the berlin okay so please can you show us and tell us more yeah, about yes, yes. and please open it yes. i'm i'm uh, victor Može isto, huh? Bush look so at the that. 15 years yeah it's something ceramic. Uh, islamic uh, ceramic. style uh, we did it because the, if you see there is a number of bottles we have some production of the the, the production is limited uh, sometimes uh, will be around 2000 bottles as far as i know and here you can find let me see if i find the the number no here is not written then maybe it's in the bottle yes but this is beautiful look at that yes okay this is the 90 then the, the bottle number 90. ah okay yes and yes, it's pure rum in the same style way we do the our rum, as I said. Uh, it's a storage in um, barrels that more than 100 years. Really? So, yes, yes, we still have this, this barrel. I, I saw it by myself when I was in the factory. So you go to underground. And so ah, also I, I would like to say that there is a evaporation of 12% because the rum, when it's a storage in the barrels, maybe 200 liters, they evaporate to 12%. Yeah, yeah. And so 
this is the spirit um, they call el espíritu de los ángeles oh yeah and, yes yes when you go to the to the store to the basement so you smell this kind of ram also with the spider nets that behind yeah. of this and the sticky floor because of course some of the barrels are also leaking no it's yeah It's quite interesting. So the, our our distillery are not so modern. Yeah, are not modern because uh, for my, yeah. doing modern we need a lot of money. So in Cuba also, but the things that we have as, are quite uh, pure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, beautiful, brother. Be beautiful. Let's try it then. Yeah, sure. So you you open those. Let's say, crewers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It looks beautiful. This is in yeah. order to, to make you nervous, no? In order to, to say, hey, what is it will be inside? Because in order to do that, maybe it must be, but it's quite, uh, I mean, uh, interesting. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, yes, the flavor, smoky also, but fine. However, we have another one, but you didn't mention it. If you take the catalog, you can see it, uh, Estrella del Caribe. I saw it. Yes. Do you have, it's like but a the diamond. Is, We cannot sell it from the moment, but we have it now in our store. Yes. What was the price of that? Uh, Will be around five thousand euros. Yes. And this one is around two hundred, right? Yes. Yeah. See this. So almost, the one... almost you need a tool to open it. <laughs> Look at this baby. Yeah, yeah. I have the. Uh, uh, maybe it could be good if yes, please. Mm -hmm. That's it better in order to. Oh my God. So yeah. this is the perfect for smoking one nice cigar, one nice terrace. Oh yeah. And just to be with someone or maybe to be alone, it's just. Ah, di Dios mío. <laughs> Dios mío. So, if it's, uh, of course, it's blended, but... Uh, yes, in this case, we can say because of the name of the, the, the name of 15 years, uh, they properly have 15 years um, inside. Okay, okay. Anyway, I can tell you that the distiller master said to me that... Uh, The people they like to hear, as I told you, the name, no, the the, the age of the, bird. but it's quite impossible to drink something that is 23 years or 15 years. Uh, but the minimum drop must be around this in order to get this age. Yeah, because it's uh, if you if you don't add anything inside, it's gonna be like bittery and uh, yeah. it's gonna be, it's not gonna be a rum taste. That's why. I mean that's what that's how they do it in uh, cognac. Uh, they if it's a uh, EXO, you can find it's mostly blended yes. also. You can find like 80 year old cognac inside, but it's like three drops. Yes, yeah. You know that's that's why it's blended. This is the way. Yeah, because yes. of the balance and everything. Yes. Because if you if you let uh, rum to be in one barrel for 30 years. It's yes. <laughs> it's not gonna taste like you know. No, you, no. you need to you need to blend it uh, yes. to to get a, to achieve what you want to achieve. This is the secret of the distiller master. The way they do it and the the time they take it for yes. Yeah, the yeah. This, uh, master distillers are like uh, pretty pretty nasty guys who knows how to do the job. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking now uh, there's a um, Italian director, film director. He he died. Uh, I think it was Roberto Benini, and he said about the Cuban rums that uh, Cuban rum, he has spoken about this, has a soul, his own soul, and it's like a movie, like a film. Mm -hmm. I, every sip that you take a Cuban rum, it tells you one story, mm -hmm. and it's true. That's true. Uh, yeah. This is the way I adapt for myself or for Legendario. Mm -hmm. Every sip that I do with Legendario is nice story that i have to tell or something that i have to remind me my yeah my mind And what's to... uh, what's on the on the bottle what's what's the what's the sketch uh, okay because 
this is uh, they represent that time before the Rome. Uh, you know that Cuba was an island and was many pilots and and oh, yeah, yeah. corsairs, and they were the first who introduced some kind type of rum into the islands. In that time, it was something like rum bouillon mm -hmm. or tafia. And so after that, the process was in, in, in innovating, and so they got the, the room. It's something like represent the Cuba in that time. Jesus Christ! Let me see it one more time. Like uh, like you can see the uh... yeah. This is the, the the first beginning of the of the room. Oh, this is a ship. Yes. Yeah. This is uh, beautiful ceramics. Yes. Fifteen year old. And forty percent. Yeah, but I, I I need to check what what's what's the price. Just a second. Yes, I need it. I, I think it's uh it's around two hundred, but it will be around two hundred, two hundred twenty more. Yeah, or less, yes. if you buy uh, if you buy this one, you can know that uh, you produce it like two thousand bottles per year. Yes, of this one. Yeah. yeah, that that's the collectible thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 Legend, uh, so, for yeah. example, this bottle I told you about five thousand. We, uh, my boss, he wants to do it in a church, ch careful process. He doesn't like, for example, he says, "No, give me three bottles." No, mm -hmm. we must to create one atmosphere for that, and to make maybe one concert or maybe someone from from Spain or from Cuba have to come uh, with the still master or maybe my boss and to with gloves. Yeah, yeah, to give you this to make one like a price, yes, yeah, it, it's yeah. not so easy yeah, yeah, yeah. to do that. And so, we are marketing department, they are looking for the way to, to start uh, do, you know, doing this, yeah. yes, yeah, it's quite a quite, uh, interesting product. So, uh, uh, we talked about it about the uh, elixir. So, uh, just for the record, Elixir uh, de Cuba is our most selling uh, legendary uh, product. And uh, there is a couple of reasons why. Because it has lower ABV, oh, sorry. it has a uh, sweetness, yes. it has a uh, rum component, it has a uh, vanilla, it has a uh, earth, it has a uh, tobacco. <clears throat> Everything is inside, but the most important thing is that you can sip it over the ice or the frozen one, yes. or you can make it to the cocktail. Yes, and it's a, a perfect perfect product to do. So we're gonna. Let me tell you something. I was in Italy, yeah, in in Rome, and someone invited me to drink elixir, and they had some chocolate glass, like a shot shot glass, but. Mm -hmm. From chocolates, mm -hmm. and they pour elixir, and they pour the panna, this kind of cream, mm -hmm. and with some powder of cinnamon and some powder of uh, peppers, mm -hmm. and they took it and they threw it into the mouth, into the mouth like explosion, sense, sense explosion, and it was fantastic. <laughs> and this, this is more short, I think, it was around fifteen euro. Eh? Fifteen. Fifteen euro. euro, yes. Yeah, but this uh... shot with. Uh, Yes, it was in one bar in, in Rome. I don't remember. It was in the center of the of the city. I I said uh, to so many people, uh, this is a perfect, perfect. Uh, okay, I'm gonna say liqueur, but it's a rum liqueur. Uh, it's a perfect product to make a Cuba Libre, which is a uh, one of the most selling cocktails yes. all over the world. Just this Coke and uh, lime juice. Yes, and, and ginger of, ale also the people. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of ice. Yes. Yeah, and that's uh, why. What, not, not why. If you, uh, when you put uh, like like a regular white rum, it kind of, if you, if, you, if you pour it like too, too little, it's, it doesn't have a kick. Yes. If you pour it too much, it has a yes. like it, it's it's not good. It's not balanced. But with this one, if you do it just like 0 0.5, uh, mm. 15 milliliters, this mm. and Coke like 100, 100, you 100, get the 125 milliliters and a little bit of lime juice, you have a perfect cocktail. It's perfect for the summer. Yes. If you are uh, in the pool or, so, or somewhere else, it's and uh, 
Uh, what's the point? The point is that uh, like regular people who doesn't know much about rum and our industry are liking it, yes. and they like to make uh, Cuba Libre yes. with 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 this one. So that's especially if you have this little flag. It's an <laughs> amazing uh, thing. I in in Canada. I was in one place. The name is Champagnerie in Quebec, in Montreal, and I was there, and they had elixir in that time. And they offered me elixir with the champagne. And it was amazing. It was amazing. It was so tasty. It was quite different. And uh, yes. With trade. Champagne. Yes, champagne, yes. Like uh, uh they took maybe uh, the, the glass of champagne and I don't know how many centiliters they, they pour inside and maybe one shot of elixir. It was fantastic, yes. Really? Yes. Do we have it? uh okay 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 i'm gonna see what we can do okay so tell me uh you become uh you became a like expert manager for the for the legendario you had a, a lot of experience before that but now i can assume you have a a lot more experience like what uh for the people who are trying to do something like that or people young people who are watching this podcast and who tries to place themselves on the market? Uh, what were the like strategies you, you used to get to know uh, new people and to open new markets? First, first we don't like to press anyone to drink. Uh, if they don't like to drink alcohol, there are a lot of young people. They are not in this way because they are in another uh, another position. Everything is respectable, mm -hmm. and we don't like to push. We don't like to press. But when of course, we like that the people drink, but always if they, if it is, they drink in the responsible way. Mm -hmm. And the way we use is, for example, is to mm, to promote, for example, this elixir because it's not so strong. And at the evening, when you are with friends, when you are sharing with them, in the meal, for example, when you are with, in your house with your parent and you want to make some celebration also, we, we recommend to drink this elixir, for example, or the Añejo 9, if you want to be more in a quiet way. Mm -hmm. This is more simple way, uh, but the strategies, we have a lot of strategies according to marketing. Um, we, we make some, some events, some parties, we make some invitation to some place to spend one night or two night, if they uh, like several uh, kind of actions we, we do like uh, you make a contact, let's say for the for the new country, and then you with that uh, event party you try to to test it. Uh, if it's quite difficult because when you go to one first first time to one country and you 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 see one party and to to go into one event, uh, it, it takes. Too much time, and yeah. you have to be more. To, to, you have to be more in this place, no? To know better the regulation, the laws, mm. and to be confident with the people who are dealing with your your brand. Sure, yeah. And imagine if you were going to make one event and you are going to participate on it, but we don't have a lot of budget mm -hmm. for that. And after that, come one of the biggest uh, players. And they do another party bigger and better than yours. Yeah. So the people they take into account uh, in their mind that they they forget immediately your party, no, your event. Mm. In Spain we do it because in Spain we are more time since two thousand, and more. Spain is the, the the major market that consumes legendario. But for market that we are breaking out into the, at the beginning like this. We like to be, to to make degustation in the place, mm -hmm. to make some kind of degustation in the bar that the people taste it, uh, to make some some awards, some prizes. If you drink this elixir, uh, you can have this or something like this. Is the way we do it. Yeah, it's it's quite interesting. Yeah, it's not easy to fight. No, with with, with big guys. No, it's yeah. not, not not easy, of course. But this is the way. That's what we do. That's what you guys do. You yes. give us. Yes, I think Pretty. that's the reason uh, I, I agree with you guys when I, I met you in Berlin because you are the person that I would like to be in touch and to mm -hmm. to grow up the brand. As we have made, I have made with another ones, for example, the guy from Czech Republic. 
uh, we are today well recognized, renowned brand in Czech Republic because of them, the work we have done there. But it took a long time. Yeah, of course. It took a long time. It needs time. Yes. If you want to do it in a healthy way. Yes. But we don't want to be crazy and say, hey, we are going to make one party and no way. No, because this is. Uh, we, we, we say in Spanish, um, we say, pan para hoy y hambre para mañana. Bread for today and hunger for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh yes, yes. God, yeah. yeah, the Span Spanish people. So, uh, uh, like, the Cuban culture is like, you know, as, a, as, I, as I assume, like dancing, drinking rum, smoking cigars, drinking coffee, like all of that culture, it's, you know, like Cuban. It's, a, it's, yes. it's natural. Yes, in, it's natural. In Cuban way. But you, as a guy who, who was born in Cuba, lived in Cuba, uh, breathed the Cuban air, you know everything about your country. But at the same time, you travel the, like, the whole world. Uh, but that uh, like, uh, old question, which is uh, that mojito in Cuba is the, the, the best mojito you could ever drink. Did you get in touch with mojito, the, the mojitos that are like, better in other country, or at least the same as in Cuba? No. Uh, I think this is not like a myth, no, no, like a myth. Uh, in Cuba, they are good bartenders, and of course, and it's respectful because uh, mojito is something typical from there, no? Yeah. But for me, the best mojito I have drunk in, in Praga. In Prague? Mm. I have drunk in Praga, and the second one with my wife. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, but yes, I have drunk a lot of nice cocktails in many other countries, despite of Cuba, yes. Yeah. So it's but amazing. in Cuba, it depends on the place you go. Sure. Depends on the, the bartender that you meet, uh, meet up, yes. So uh, there are a lot of... How, how, does, it, uh, how does that look in, uh, in Cuba? Like, in Havana, you probably have a lot of... Uh, bars that are like for tourists and, yes. uh, and there are like the best Cuban bartenders yeah, or like yeah. yeah most yeah. of them are concentrated in Havana yes yeah, yeah. Uh, and they have a, a, a big culture a nice culture about the, the preparing cocktails um, imagine that Cuba was as they said was the, the I don't know how to say that but Hemingway was there many times yeah. So he likes to drink there in Cuba their cocktails there for in, in Floridita. And so there are a lot of uh, recognized people from America that they were in Cuba in that time mm -hmm. before revolution. And they were spending their time, the holiday there, and they were using and drinking mojito. And so this still keep traditional in, in the mentality of the Cubans. So uh, does the Cuban people go in those bars or is it just for the Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, are like uh, like like the regular people are the owners of the government. Are both 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 are owners of the government and regular people that sometimes they get money in order to to make something special. Yeah. And they prefer to go to one nice place like this and to invite their girlfriend or their companion. And yes, sure, yeah. But I have seen it. Yes. Now I today, when you go to Cuba. And you go to one place like this, it's, there are a lot of tourists, but also Cubans. So is it uh, possible? I, I think my, my, my friend told me, like he was in Havana like a couple of years ago. He told me that uh, taxi drivers uh, earn much than, than doctors. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because the taxi drivers are doctors <laughs> who are. I know. Yes. <laughs> yes. Many people who have the, the career. They, they don't they, they perceive a low salary. So in order to get another salary, they, they drive a taxi or they build up another uh, from one old motorcycle. They, they buy like another engine from yeah, the motorcycle. They yeah. buy another small taxi and, yeah. and they get some extra for that, for living. So you are, uh, you are, you are there by yourself. You, yes. need to, you need to figure it out to, yes. to, live, to live like... At least normal life. Anyway, the 
the country, we, we are facing a lot of difficulties and mm -hmm. lack of many things. But still, the, the spiritus of the Cuban uh, keep smiling, keep uh, singing, keep uh, sharing yeah. with their friends yeah. and with a good heart. Yes. Yeah, that's. Uh, for, it's, it's not uh, easy to say that that's only what's left, but uh, you don't have nothing. If you get rid of the smiling, dancing, yes. being happy. You, you, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like. It sounds, it's somewhere in the middle, you know, yeah. people are, you know, happy, kind and everything. But yeah, how many uh, does the, like, tourists, are they uh, regularly there? How many tourists can come at the one time? And They, before COVID, many tourists, they were coming to Cuba mainly from Canada. Oh. And after COVID, now the situation has changed a lot because of the electricity, lack of electricity, lack of food. And now they go a few of them. No, I cannot say how many of them. Yeah, of course. If million or but less than one million, yes. But what's the what's the problem with electricity? Like they don't they don't. Yes, we don't produce electricity. The electricity we produce are for the hospital or hotel, and the other one we import it from other countries. So if there are some problems to import electricity, yes. Uh, I, as far as I know, I, we got electricity from Turkey. There were some ships that they came from Turkey to Cuba and they were in the sea, like platform, and they were providing electricity to the cap to Havana. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. So if, if, if all of that is happening in Havana, what's going on in the other cities? Imagine. It's quite difficult, yes. Very difficult. Yeah. How many people live in Cuba? Mm, yes, yes, I know. But I think Come maybe on. 10 million people. 10 million people. Yes. 10 million people. Maybe 8 million live in Havana and the other one in... Jesus Christ. Christ. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's... that's uh... I will say 10 million, maybe... As far as I know, what 12. But many people left the country now. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can Google it, yes. Yeah, I will Google it. Human population. Okay, let's, let me check. Today, it. today in 2024. Yeah, but it's such a beautiful country. I, 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 yes, it is. I, I just, I just don't care. Eleven point twenty-one. Oh, okay. It's from the two thousand twenty-two. Oh. Uh, probably that much in Miami. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, but yeah, people are still bringing a child to the world. You, you can see that. Was this ninety? 1970, it was 8.87 million. Mm -hmm. Now it's 11.21. Yeah, so it's uh, okay. Jesus, my brother, we need to move on. We have uh, a lot of job to do. Yes, with you, of course. Uh, thank you for being guest. It was a pleasure. Uh, really, I felt so comfortable, and yes, it's it's kind of easier yeah. after one hour. So, but the more I like it here was the air conditioning. Yeah, it's getting better, right? <laughs> but the, the companion yeah, is yeah. good, yes. And uh, yeah, thank you, brother. Thank you. Brother. Uh, thank you. One more time. Thank you. It's a beautiful rum and. Thank uh, you. To je to. Hvala svima što pratite. Subscribe-te se kako smo blizu tisuću. To je nerealno. Znači još samo 5-6 subscribera. I to je to. Znači TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Zapratite Legendario. Znači nije Legendario, nego je Legendario. Uh, na Instagramu uh, i Facebook, I think it's Facebook probably yeah, also, right? Ok, i to je to. Vidimo se na nekoj cugi, na nekom finom makitu. Živjeli. Ćao. Ćao. Muy bien. Bro, this one. Muy bien.